Who? It's Amanda Robbins here with my amazing husband, Jarek Robbins, decorative performance coach, number one bestseller of Live It, Achieve Success by Living with Purpose, and my favorite human in the whole wide world. Take it away, my love. Um, today we're talking about the concept of people wanting or being excited about the potential of achieving something big in their life, meaning they have a vision, a dream, a goal. There's something out there that interests them, that intrigues them. And for some reason, they can't figure out why they haven't been able to achieve it. And so oftentimes, um, I've noticed a pattern where people, let's say, have decided that their purpose in life is to help others, to make a difference, to make the world a better place. And so their health is important. Their relationship is important. Their, their ability to have uh, freedom is important. All these things are important. And then they looked at money and they said, you know, Money is a means to an end. Money is not really that important. Money is not that big of a deal. And then life goes on, and, and I agree with that concept. And at some stage of their life, they look back and they start thinking, how come I don't have as much money as I'd like? And what I would look at is instead of asking that question, Let's narrow it down to three specific categories and find out which one needs an adjustment. So I'd start with skill set and say, based on the vision you have of that financial goal you've set, or based on the vision you have of the relationship you really desire, or based on the vision you have of the health and fitness you you really would love to, to, you know, evolve into based on that vision. Do you have the skill set required in order to have that? If you wanted to start earning $10 million a year, do you have the skill set to earn $10 million a year? If you wanted to get into incredible fit shape and health, uh, do you have the skill set, the knowledge, the actual tools of what to do in order to get into that health? Um, I was talking to a friend who said they were ready to call in that amazing relationship. Well, here's a question. Do you have the skill set to actually maintain and, and grow that relationship that you desire? And so you got to get real with yourself and, and say, you know, let's say on a scale from zero to 10, 10 being you not only have the skill set, but you've practiced it, you've refined it. Uh, you know the difference between a, a 9.5 and a 10 in the skill sets. You know, you know which two adjustments make all the difference in your finances or in your health or in your relationship. You know what is the make or break factors. You know what you need to do every day. You know what intensity or effort you need to do it. You know how you know what's most important to really succeed in this category. So you not only have the skill set, you know what to do, but you've practiced and refined it and truly mastered your craft in the skill set. So zero to 10, where would you rate your skill set? And so those of you watching live with us, uh, let's make this session interactive. In the comment box, um, pick which category you most want to improve. Is it health and fitness? Is it uh, finances and, and, and more financial freedom or, or wealth and time freedom? Or is it um, money? Is that the three categories? Relationships? Oh, health, relationships. Health. I'm so sorry. <laughs> relationships. So is it health, wealth, or relationships? Pick a category. And then in the chat box, give it a zero to 10. Zero meaning you don't know what to do or you know what to do, but you certainly not practiced it. A 10 being you know exactly what to do and you have honed, mastered, and refined this skill set that you can deliver when you're at your best. You can deliver when you're at your worst. You can deliver when you're busy. You, you can absolutely deliver regardless of situation or circumstance would be a 10. 
And so let's talk skill set. Have you built the skill set to get the results you want in the category of life you're focused on? Number two, number two would be mindset. I was just doing a coaching call. And at the end of the call, I asked this person, what is your plan? And they said, my plan is to do five hours a week of this and two hours a week of that and, and one hour a week of this. And then at the end of every week, I'm going to write down at the beginning what all my goals are. And at the end of the week, I'm going to review and figure it out, uh, you know, where I missed and then dig into like why I missed. And I leaned in and said, excuse me, did you just tell me that your mindset is to start the week knowing, planning that you're going to not complete everything you say you're going to do, and you're already mentally prepared to, to go to the end of the week and figure out and dig in to find out why you didn't do what you said you were going to do. I said, did I hear you right? And he said, it sounds kind of weird when you say it like that. I said, I know. That's like someone in the Olympics saying, hey, here's, here's my plan. I'm going to get to the starting line. I'm going to run like hell. Uh, and then afterwards, I'm going to watch my footage to find out why I didn't finish the race. <laughs> that, that's my plan. That's my psychology. That's my mindset of how I'm going to take on this gold medal Olympic race. So what's a champion's mindset then? Well, I asked him. I said, how can we make sure you succeed this week? And I said, if you went to the gym, have you ever done a bench press? He said, sure. I said, if I brought you into the gym and your mindset was I'm going to succeed no matter what, and I started you off by putting 700 pounds on the bench press and said, go ahead, jump over there. Get yourself super hyped up and excited. Just get under that 700 pounds of weight, throw it up and see what happens. I don't care how hyped up you are, how excited you are, how motivated, determined, passionate, all those things. You can get all the hype you want. You're going to lift that bar up and it's going to drop on your chest and it's going to feel like you're going to die. And you're going to need a couple really big humans to try to help get, get that off of you. You haven't built the muscles to maintain that level of push yet. The question would be if you wanted to dial in your mindset and actually build confidence to build self-esteem. Self-esteem is esteem of self. You only get self-esteem by doing things you say you're going to do. You say you're going to do it, then you do it, and you say, wow, I now believe in my own word. I'm a person of my word. When I say I'm going to do it, I do it. Wow, I have esteem in myself. I believe in myself because I've noticed I make a commitment. I stick to my commitment. Boom. That's how life works now. But you can't do that by starting off with a 700-pound bench press commitment. So you got to start with what can you commit to? What can you commit to that you can absolutely make happen no matter what this week? And let's have our mindset be, I'm going to commit to something. It might not be the ultimate big vision of what I'm going after long term, but I'm going to commit to something that I can absolutely commit to making happen no matter what. And I will absolutely get it done. As soon as I get it done, I will high five myself and next week I'll do it again. And next week I'll do it again. At some point, 20 pounds on a bench press bar gets a little boring. So you add more weight. You say, okay, I've committed to this. I've completed this. I've committed to this. I've completed this. I'm five weeks in. It's a little boring. I'm going to put a little more weight on the bar. Now I'm going to add more things I can accomplish this week so that I build my self-esteem, so that I build my confidence. And when I say it, I do it no matter what. And over time, you can start to max out that space to where maybe you can bench 400 pounds or 500 pounds or 700 pounds. You're one of these crazy lift people. Um, but it starts with picking something you can commit to and absolutely following through no matter what, and then building that muscle over time. And so mindset, we need to get that right. Skill set, we talked about first. The third part is effort. In order to get the body you desire, in order to get the health and fitness you desire, in order to get um, the relationship you desire, and not only get it, but keep it. You know, people, people talk about getting rich all the time. I don't want to just get rich. I want to stay rich. 
that would suck to get it and lose it. You know, I don't want to get a great relationship. I want to get and maintain and continually make my relationship even better. I don't, I don't want to look back and go, yeah, I had a great relationship and then it disappeared. I want to know how do you maintain it? How do you grow it? How do you make it better every, every single day, week, month, and year? Um, you know, health and fitness wise, I don't want to get in shape and then all of a sudden be a fat slob someday and be like, whoa, at one point I had abs. Like, how do you get the there? Best shape of my life versus- and how do you maintain it? Yeah. How do you really stay there? This comes down to effort. Effort. And so if you look at the category of your life you're most focused on right now and you were honest with yourself, what level of effort are you actually putting in? This is where people tend to get a little bit more real, where they say, oh, I know what to do. I have the skill set. I might need to refine it a little, but I know I have the skills. Um, mindset. There's a few things I could sharpen up. You know, I'm going to have a, a mindset to win. I'm going to dial that in and really build my internal beliefs, build my internal fortitude, build my self-esteem and confidence in this. Effort. This is where all the stories come in. I'm too busy. I don't have enough time. Uh, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I'm, I'm, there's too many things pulling up my calendar. Effort. This is where all the magic comes in. And I'll tell you, you could put all the effort in the world. And if you don't believe it's possible, your mindset's off, you'll still not get it or you'll get it and somehow sabotage it. And if you have your mindset dialed in and your effort dialed in, but truthfully, you're just not skilled. Sometimes you can still succeed, but you're going to have to put in five times, 10 times, maybe a hundred times the effort just to get an average result. But if you have the mindset dialed in and the skill set dialed in, and you're willing to put in real effort, you know, putting in a couple, you know, putting in 20 minutes a day at the gym isn't enough effort to have the abs or physical fitness to go run an Ironman competition. Like that ain't it. <laughs> uh, you know, you got to decide what do I really want? What am I committed to making happen? And if I have the skill set and I have the mindset, what level of effort is actually required to get and maintain and sustain this result ongoing. I'll pause there for you to add your thoughts. What do you think, love? About which part? That was really great. You covered so much goodness. Um, anything specific that you wanted to... <laughs> Sprinkle on some Amanda magic for them. All right. Well, give them the goods. Show them what you got. You know, I think one thing that really caught my attention from what you shared <laughs> was there's so much goodness. Okay. So I'd love to hear for those that are listening or tuning in right now, what was it that stood out for you? I'm very curious to know what stood out from you from what he shared. The thing that stood out for me was when you shared the example of someone going, I'm at the end of the week, I'm going to check in with where I missed. So at the beginning of the week, I'm going to set what I'm going to do at the end of the week. I'm going to, you know, check what I missed. And I love that you differentiated between how are you starting off with the mindset of you're going to miss the target. And I think that's really important to, to capture and then to share what is a more empowering way to do reflection, right? Instead of with the mindset, because mindset is so critically important of these three, um, would you call it the triple threat mindset, skill set, and effort? Mindset is a huge part of it. This is so if our mindset is that we're going to miss the target by the end of the week and we're just going to reflect on what, you know, why we missed it, that's already starting off with not a very strong mindset. Whereas the difference is if we started off the week with here are my targets and this is the effort I'm going to put in to make sure it happens and making sure that you have the skill set to make it happen, then at the end of the week, if, if you miss the target, but again, the mindset doesn't start with when I miss the target or if I miss the target, it's simply is my mindset dialed in? This is my target. I have the skill set. I'm going to put in the effort to make sure I hit that goal. 
At the end of the week, we do a reflection and then we ask three questions, which is what went well, what, would, what did I learn, and what would I do differently next time? And those three questions allow you not to, to assume that you're ever going to miss the target. You keep a strong mindset, but you know that the reflection is going to be simply on what was the performance, right? Period. So it's not a missing, but it's a, what, how did I do? How do we do? Uh, what do we learn? And what will we do differently next time? Right. Or what went well? So three questions, what went well, what did we learn and what would we do different next time? Or what would I do different next time? And from there, then we can apply that and either refine our skill set or improve our effort. But without a doubt, it's going to strengthen our mindset because we're not starting off the week assuming we're going to miss anything, right? Uh, what's so funny is that uh, last week I dropped into a, a local workout class and I was laying down on a bench doing, uh, what's this one? A dumbbell press? Is that it? Bench press. A, ben <laughs> a bench press, but I was doing it with dumbbells. <laughs> I was doing a bench press with dumbbells. So you're laying on your back. I'm not, like, that's so easy. I can do that. It, it turns out I haven't done that in maybe, I don't know, a couple years or something because I just like looked at the weights everyone else was doing. I was like, I got this. I'm an athlete. I work out. Well, it turns out if you don't work out that specific muscle, then you probably don't have the skill set. Was, was my mindset laser focused? Absolutely. I was a 12 out of 10. I was like, got it. Lay down, push up some weights, done. And I grabbed like, I don't know, maybe 20 pounds and it, it, things weren't moving. Like my arms weren't moving and it wasn't that heavy. But the, my, my, my point is the mindset was there and the effort was there. I was pushing with all my might and it wasn't moving. However, the skill set wasn't there. Never was the focus on, oh, I'm going to try 20. And if I don't, if I can't do it, then I'll drop down. It was never that. It was like, I'm going to do it 10,000%, right? So what's important is when you miss the target or you don't deliver the performance you thought or hoped you would, then it's, it's not, again, the focus is never when I miss the target or if I miss the target, it's simply evaluating where is your mindset at? Where is your skill set? And where's your effort at? And being honest and realistic with that, showing up, giving it your all, and then asking those three questions. Oh, wow. Apparently I can't lift 20 or I don't know, it's 20 each. Do we count that as 40 or is it 20? How does that work? And whatever, <laughs> whatever the weight was, it wasn't working. And so, uh, it wasn't a fail. It was simply feedback, right? It was, ah, I might need to adjust my weights because my skill set did not match what was required in that moment to do a successful bench press. So we adjust. What did I learn? Not at 20 yet. My mindset is still intact. I'm still going to make it. I'm still going to put in maximum effort. So that idea at the end of the week, a champion's mindset, a, a resilient uh, mindset, a growth mindset isn't focused on like failure. It's simply focused on feedback and how can I obtain the feedback after the performance, right? Whatever it is that you're trying to go after, how, what am I focused on in a way that I can dial in constant and never ending improvement in going after my goals? Does that resonate? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm at 10 pounds if, if you are wondering, and I don't know, 10 and 10. So maybe that's 20. Tell me how it works. <laughs> is, it, is it count as 20 or is it only 10? Tell me. You can count it however you like. I'm at 210. So if I have dumbbells, I'm at two. I want the actual answer. Do you know it? It's 20 pounds. Sweet. Okay. So I can bench press 20 pounds. That's great. Strong start. <laughs> Apparently not 40. My skill set isn't there yet, but it's going to be because I know if I continue to keep that mindset, which was serving me greatly, um, keep putting in the effort. The next thing is just boosting the skill set, right? So I love what you talked about, which was just check in with like, where are you in each one of these categories? And if you're, you know, where would you say at what point, at what metric or is that an area of concern? Is that like green light? You're, you're good to go. You're off to the races versus, uh, you might not be ready for that. What do you, what are your thoughts on that? This is where you have to help someone sit down. And I usually use this tool. It's a tool we teach in Performance Coach University. It's a tool we use in the Core 4 Challenge. 
Um, if you're interested in learning tools like this and applying them to your own life, applying them to your team, if you run an organization or own a company, if you're interested in learning these tools where you can actually start making a positive difference in other people's lives and have that time freedom and financial freedom to not have to be stuck on some other work schedule, but you want to work for yourself and actually decide when, where, and how you live your life. If you want to be able to travel more and have more freedom, uh, and step into that space of becoming a coach and having a coaching business, make sure to go to performancecoachuniversity.com forward slash apply. Uh, we teach tools like this there. Generally, where and when we use this tool is when someone comes in and says, hey, I have this huge goal I'm really excited about. Here's what I want to make happen. Here's what I'm dreaming of. Here's all the different pieces. I say, okay, great. Let's make sure the foundation is dialed in before we have you go out there and just give it a go. And real quick, if you wanted to start making $10 million a year, which for some people is pennies, and for other people is a number beyond what they think is possible for themselves, I would ask, zero to 10, where's your mindset around making 10 million bucks a year? If you're someone who thinks it's unimaginable we're going to have to work on your mindset. If if I said, hey, we're going to go raise $500 million and launch this, and your brain goes, uh-oh, that's a lot. I need to work on your mindset, your belief of yourself. I need yeah. to make sure that you you really not only believe you can do it, you have what it takes, you will do it, you'll succeed. You need the self-esteem. You need confidence to know that you can do this. Like I need to work on your internal self to make sure you're prepared to step into what is about to happen. If that's dialed in, you have absolute and total certainty. You've, you've done your mental rehearsal. You've done your mental visualization. You've broken down what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. You've stress tested it and found where and how it might break. You've come up with solutions of how each of those breaks will be handled if they occur. Like your mindset is dialed in. Notice I didn't say just focus on the best outcome and that'll make it work. You actually built a solid, resilient mindset. You did the real work to get your mindset dialed. And if that's a 10, now we're going to go to skill set. Do you have the skill set to deliver when it comes to a $10 million a year business? Do you have the skill set to deliver managing and growing that billion dollar fund? Do you have the skill set to deliver running and really delivering that coaching practice or business you're building? Do you have the skills? How do we know if you have the skills? Well, do you know what to do? Have you practiced it like your life depends on it? Have you refined it so you know the difference between an A plus, an A minus, or a B? You know the difference between an A and an A plus. You know the difference between a B and a B plus. You know the difference between those results. And you know exactly what the one or two things is you need to adjust skill set wise that makes all the difference. You figured it out. You've practiced it so many times that you know exactly what to adjust and when to adjust it. I have a friend who used to train F1 race car drivers. They would train their eyes that when they saw a certain shade of color, they'd automatically move instantly without thought to, to overtake the car in front of them. They would automatically move instantly without thought to overcome the car in front of them. And so this concept of how you've refined your skill set to the point that your body knows how to respond before thought even has to occur. Have you trained it again and again and again so that it becomes automatic, unconscious competence, meaning you, you've mastered the skill? If your mindset dialed in, your skill set's dialed in, now it comes down to effort. Did you show up one time and try and go, oh, shoot, it didn't work. I guess it's not for me. That is nowhere near enough effort. One of our favorite groups we invested in, they told us, a fund that recently just raised over $4 billion for their round two. This group came to our investment group 
four different times. First time was told no. Second time was told no. Third time was told no. Fourth time, they finally said, okay, fine, we'll do it. That's effort. You know, if you go into the movie business, the story is Sly Stallone wrote a movie script called Rocky, and he went in New York City and pitched it 1,500 times. And someone said, wait a second, there's only 500 agents. How'd you pitch it 1,500 times? He said, some of them I went three, four, five, ten times, same person. <laughs> I was like, that takes skill to convince the same person to listen to your pitch again for the 10th time. Are you putting in the effort? Are you practicing and refining like you're physically putting in the effort over and over and over again? If you get all three of those dialed in, you will watch the results show up that you really want. But nine times out of 10, 9.99%, if I take someone and for some reason they're not getting the result, I can usually figure out in those three categories which of the three needs to be adjusted and if we make that one adjustment, all of a sudden, boom, the results amplify almost immediately. Again, if you want to learn these skills to practice on yourself, we call that self-coaching, go to performancecoachuniversity.com forward slash apply. We'd love to have you join us. Um, if you want to learn how to guide other people through these types of tools to know that you're making a real difference, a real impact in the world. Uh, someone said, when you die, don't just die and not be remembered, be someone who's actually made an impact in the world, who actually made a positive difference, not only in your own life and the life of the kids you have or family you have, but in the community around you. Find a way to make a positive, powerful difference. And gaining these skills gives you those tools to go make that kind of difference and impact in the world. Um, Tony, Jarek has a powerful voice, reminds me of Dr. Covey. I love Stephen Covey. He's a wonderful human being. Um, let's see. You do have a great voice. I think that's Elena. Hi, Jarek and Amanda. When will the relationship webinar be? We've already done the relationship webinar. Uh, it's actually recorded and part of our Core 4 Challenge program. If you go to thecore4challenge.com, um, we have seven months of training on health, wealth, relationship, and career, as well as a full 90-minute webinar on relationships if you're looking to dial that area of your life in. Definitely check it out. Um, let's see, I'll type it in, uh, it. core for challenge.com and then performance coach university.com forward slash two links from today's show. Uh, you have to jump to go teach. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for doing this work with me, my love. I love you. All of you watching. Thank you for tuning in.